Hey everyone, Mike here. Um, I've been working for about a year on a stand-up paddle board. <clears throat> and uh, I've had a few different designs and, uh, that I started with and I, I didn't like them because it was a little bit too thin, not wide enough. And the, uh, the way I was going to use the uh, styrofoam was not gonna work as well as this um, technique that I'm going to show you here. This is a pretty awesome technique and I'm gonna show you and I think you'll agree. So here we go. Well, first, actually, what I need to do is uh, turn, a, turn the vacuum on, and then after I turn the vacuum on, you won't be able to hear me. Okay, on this design, the reason why I cut these holes is because, because they are guides. These are guide holes for the uh, dowel rods that I'm going to use. It's going to hold everything in place as I glue it up. And this uh, is eight inches thick, so it should hold a pretty heavy, heavy guy. Now, when I put this uh, piece of MDF down on my MDF form, down on the, the um, foam, you, if you come in a little bit closer, you'll see that there are some regular uh, drywall screws that are one inch. So that means that a one inch drywall screw is gonna stick up about a quarter of an inch above or below the, um, the MDF uh, pattern. That way, when I have the um, MDF in place, it, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna move around. And that's the reason why I, why I do that. So now we've got it, uh, we've got it cut out. Let me get these holes lined back up again. Okay, so let's go over here to the cutting table and we'll show you that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is line up the, um, the uh, top pattern with the bottom pattern. And the reason why we do that is to make sure that the exact um, profile is cut without having any kind of an angle on the, um, on the side. We don't want it to be uh, tilted one way or the other. We want it to be perfectly uh, cut all the way around. If you don't have a top and a bottom, uh, it could cause the, uh, the pattern to uh, cut right on the... Uh, the, the wire to cut right on the pattern and then slightly go in um, on the foam which would cause it to, uh, to to have a lot more sanding that you're going to have to do when you put this thing together. So anyway, what we need to do is take the one that we've uh, drilled and line it up with one set of holes. You don't have to worry about this side yet, but what we're doing is we get this hole lined up with this MDF, with the bottom MDF, and run this uh, this uh, dowel, this two inch dowel down through these perfectly uh, Forstner bit drilled uh, two inch holes. And that gives a perfect uh, alignment there. So now we've got, we're perfectly aligned with the top and the bottom. And so now what we do is we come over to the other side and line it up. And then once we're lined up, run the other uh, dowel down in there. You can kind of reach down and check to make sure that it's all the way through on, on both sides. All right, the other thing that I do, even though I've got these drywall screws in um, positions on both the bottom and the top uh, form, I have these um, little knobs with a quarter 20 that sandwiches, brings it down tight, sandwiches the top MDF with the bottom MDF, and that, that way, as you're moving your um, piece around as you cut, as you move it around, nothing's gonna move on you and you get a perfect uh, cut. Now, the only thing that I'm doing here is I built a hot wire cutter and it's just uh, an arm that comes out over and goes down into a spring, heavy spring clip 
that pulls this um, nichrome wire tight. It's an 18 gauge nichrome wire. And then I hooked it up to a battery charger, which essentially is, is shorting out this wire. So in a second, you'll see that turn red. I got it set at 40 amps. I turn it on. <clears throat> and then uh, it'll smoke a little bit. Actually, before we get it, get it going while it's warming up, I'm going to put on a filter. This filter is a... Um, this filter is a, it's a charcoal filter mask to uh, prevent breathing in the fumes that uh, that this plastic is going to give off as you as you cut it. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing cut out. Off the uh, turn off the cutter, the battery charger. You swing your piece around that you just cut. Of course, I'm going to take off my mask here. Undo these knobs. Take my top piece off, put it over here on the pre-cut uh, pieces, and there we go. We've got ourselves a, um, a piece of uh, styrofoam that is ready to go onto the, um, the spines, and there will be another one to go down the middle here. This is just set up um, just so I can get them all cut out, and what will happen is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, build another uh, styrofoam cutter with another um, another form that'll have a hole in the center of it where I can actually set up a hot wire and use um, use that form almost like as if it's a hot wire router because I'll be able to follow the inside and then I'll cut cut down inside the foam about just a little over a quarter of an inch so I can lay those plywood strips down inside so that we've got uh, stability um, this way and then the two inch dowels are going to give us stability this way. This thing's going to have what's called um, an endoskeleton which is what we have as humans. We have our bones so we're going to have an endoskeleton and then an exoskeleton. I'm going to um, on this one here I've got uh, fiberglass. I'm going to fiberglass the outside edge of it but I'm going to experiment with uh, Plasti Dip um, which will be a lot cheaper, I think. Not a lot cheaper, but it's going to be a lot easier uh, to paint your unit once you have it put together with Plasti Dip than it will be to try and work with, uh, with fiberglass. But anyway, as you can see, each and every one of them come over here and they line up perfectly. This is the boat, the stand-up paddleboard right here. Um, and it will get all glued together and then I'll sand it down and I'll be ready to go out and do some paddling on my stand-up paddle. I would like to call this a boat, more of a stand-up paddle boat uh, because it'll be, it's a lot wider. It's got pontoons on the bottom and a V-haul. So that's going to give you uh, tracking uh, abilities in the center and then the outside pontoons are going to give you more stability to keep it from uh, rocking too much. I'm sure it's going to rock a little bit, but um, you'll get used to it as you, as you use it. But uh, that's it. This thing's pretty cool. I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a lot more cutting to do. I have 72 of these things to cut um, because I want it to be 12 feet long. It'll be 144 inches long. And I'm going to design it in such a way that it will be two pieces so that I can have a six foot piece that will fit in the back of my, uh, I, got a, I have a Ford Ranger 
and with a cover on it so that I can stick a, a six foot piece. I got a six foot bed, stick that six foot piece back in there. The, the front half and the bottom half will be stacked on top of each other. And then when I get to wherever I want to use it, I pull it out, sandwich it together, and it'll be a clamping system. And that'll be on another video um, that I'll show you. I, did, I mean, this is the first video to kind of introduce what, what I'm doing. And then I'll do subsequent videos to uh, have more of a step-by-step -step on the gluing and the clamping and the finishing and, and all that sort of thing. So anyway, this is Mike uh, with flyfishingforbluegill.com. Uh, hope to see you on the next video.